opportunities for other attackers. Um, obviously, right here, we see he plays lots of metal energies, yeah. so he has lots of opportunities to get those attached right there. Um, one Curious to see how that matchup is going to go with against the Zoroark GX with the Lucario. Yeah, so it's going to be kind of a slow, grindy game where, because really, he's just going to attack three times. Steven's going to attack three times, take six prizes. That's his goal. Right. But meanwhile, for Diego, he's playing a Zoroark match where it's like, okay, 120, 150, like, right, it's beating. All right, set up some knockouts here and there. Lucario, take a knockout here and there. But he just needs to stall off this 16 metal energies. Right. And it'll be interesting to see. Um, unfortunately, like you said, you've only planned to attack three times, but your opponent is planning on trying to stop you from attacking three times. Uh, I actually played a deck similar to this at a local tournament a couple weeks ago, and I would get one powered up, but unable to attack because I'd have a Pokemon trapped in the active position, unable to get out of there. My opponent would play that key Guzma, disrupt my attack, and stop me from attacking three times to try to win that game. All right, and it looks like the players are ready to go, and it looks like Diego is going first, starting off with that Mew EX. Kind of a fragile card against this deck that does so much damage. Yeah, I don't think Mew EX is intended for this matchup. I think it's more for the Fighting-type matchups, um, especially with these Metal Pokémon having that Psychic Resistance. It automatically will do fewer damage, but Mew EX able to be used, as we saw in the previous match, for its own consistency as well. And now a thing to note is that Steven does play three Mew from Fates Collide as well, a card that really does try to counter those Lucarios, those Buzzwalls, even the Mew EXs as well. Right, so it'll be interesting to see. He might not have been planning on bringing him out this game, but now that he sees that Mew EX and when he later sees a Lucario, I'm sure those will come into play as well. Um, Diego right now uh, playing a Bridget, searching his deck for three basic uh, non-EX Pokemon or one EX basic. Um, well, you already start with that one EX Mew, it's fine. <laughs> he doesn't have any more EXs hopefully to pull out. <laughs> so, but no, you definitely in this matchup, you're going to want to try to pull out some basics. Uh, looking at uh, uh, Zerua and a... And this is also where he sees, oh no, yeah, I got two real Lu <laughs> prized. <laughs> But interesting to see that uh, Tapu Koko coming back out. We saw it with great success with Tord in the last game, um, and now it is coming into play against this matchup as well. Well, again, these are two very different strategies for these decks. Uh, this Dust main deck kind of reminds me of these old big basics, where it's like, all right, I'm going to get a critical mass of energy and just take one-hit knockouts everywhere. All right, so Diego attaching a strong energy, allowing his Riolu, when it evolves into Lucario Jex, to do additional damage. Uh, passes his turn over to Steven, who plays a Nest Ball, searching for a basic Pokemon. And then on the opposite side with Diego, his deck is really just setup-oriented. Like, okay, I got all my basics with Bridget. Now I need to get some Zoroarks in play so I can draw some cards. Then I'll get a little energies in play, maybe Pokey here and there with Flying Flip, and then try to get the ball rolling that way. And interestingly enough, we were talking about those Prism Star cards. We will see our first... Prism Star card here today in Solgaleo Prism with his deck. It's a very useful card. Yes, of course. Uh, having that recovery option as well uh, as a large attack on a Pokemon that is a basic Pokemon with a large amount of hit points as well. Uh, obviously, the drawback of you only get to use it once because once it is knocked out, it's put in a loss zone and unable to be played again. Uh, but looks like the second Nest Ball getting that Solgaleo Prism Star. I've, I've missed the loss zone. I'm glad they brought it back. <laughs> well, maybe someday we'll get some mechanics to add to that as well. Uh, back in the day, I played Gengar myself, so we will see <laughs> what happens here. All right, and there is an Ultra Ball. So he goes Nest Ball, Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, Cynthia to start his turn. Wow. Hey, that's a pretty good start right there. If you're able to empty out your hand and play Cynthia and draw a new hand here. Looks like he didn't play the Sycamore, so there must have been a card he wanted to save and shuffle back in. Yeah, exactly. And... Remember, this deck is very reliant on the card Max Elixir. Being able to just look at the top six, take a basic energy, and attach it to one of your benched basic Pokemon. Yeah, with his search right now, obviously he has the Mew on the bench as an option. He has that Solgaleo, Solgaleo Prism Star. So there are options there as well. Uh, but we'll see what he draws off of this new six card hand with Cynthia. We see lots of energy. Another Duskmane Necrozma, a couple Ultra Balls, and a Guzma. So it's actually pretty good because with that Solgaleo Prism Star, 
its first attack, uh, one metal, and then search your discard for a metal for every Pokemon your opponent has in play and attach it to your Pokemon any way you like. So against these Zorak decks where they fill up their bench just to deal these big numbers, it really kind of punishes them for it. That's right. Zorak GX, of course, dealing more damage for every Pokemon in play. I'm sure we're about to see one here. Uh, using Evo Soda, going to be searching his deck for e either Zoroark GX or Lucario GX. Um, Diego also taking this opportunity to look at his deck a little more just to make sure he knows what cards are prized. Probably didn't believe himself when he saw the two Riolus in there earlier as well. I don't know. I think he was just searching for the regular art Zoroark. <laughs> he likes that style better. Because it's better than the full art ones. A little more difficult to obtain, but I could agree with that. And he <laughs> drops the N early in the game. All right, and drawing brand new six for both players. And Steven's hand didn't really look that interactive. There was no max elixirs, no stuff like that. So it's kind of a welcome for him as well. Yeah, gets a fresh hand, doesn't play any cards. Uh, Diego might have been thinking that maybe he's got something there he's holding. Uh, but either way, Diego's like, well, that's going to get me a new hand of six cards. I could definitely use those six new cards. So let's see what I'm able to pull out. And I think one thing when you're ever playing Zorark, it's always just a tough decision whether you trade before or after your supporter. I think it really boils down to if you're needing something that turn, like, very much or not. Right. And we see there off the end, he did get another Zoroark. Uh, opponent sitting on a pretty nice hand there, it looks like. Yeah. Staring down double Zoroark, but <laughs> having a Max Elixir in his hand, and I think I saw a Pal Pad as well in Steven's I hand. Did. I'm right. uh, excited that card's making that comeback. <laughs> All right, so we saw a trade, discarding the uh, field blower to draw two additional cards, but and he passes. Yeah, unfortunately, Diego does not have a way to deal damage this turn. And like you said, passes the turn, and we might see some explosiveness come out of Steven right now. Max Elixir. Max Elixir, good chance it's going to hit based on the number of metal in that deck. And of course, he does hit with the basic metal energy. Or it, to that Dustin Necrozma. Is 16 the most like we've seen in a standard like deck with Max Elixir so far? I would have to say yes. Yeah. The, the theme, unless somebody came to a tournament with a theme deck at some point, uh, odds <laughs> are that, yeah, 16 energies, um, that's a large amount. So those Max Elixirs are going to be pretty solid for uh, Steven today. Yeah, exactly. And we also have that GX attack on Dusk Main. But you can only use it if you're down in prizes. That's right. So he does manually attach another energy and then goes and plays the Cynthia again, drawing into a new six-card hand, trying to find all the pieces he needs to win this match. And see, like we were saying, it takes four energy to attack, but this is turn two. There's three <laughs> energy right now. Having those max elixirs with that heavy basic energy count, definitely an advantage for Steven today. Let's see if he could take advantage of that while Diego is sitting there with only one energy on the board. Another Max Elixir as well. <laughs> oh, it, It's honestly going to be a Max Elixir show for this round. Yeah. Uh, however, he does have that Dusk Mane Necrozma in the active position, unable to trade out there, so he does just pass. He actually opts not to play it as well. Uh, does have three energy in hand. Might be like, eh, it's not going to be 100%, so I don't want to play it. Going to wait and see what happens on my opponent's turn. All right, so Diego discarding another field blower with trade to draw two more cards. Must not be anticipating too many tools in the, the opponent's matchup. Yeah, uh, looking at his list, there's only really four floatstone. Uh, you don't really need choice ban when you're doing 220 damage, 250 <laughs> damage. And we do see that Evo Soda as well, looking to get that Lucario GX in play, possibly. We have two Zorak GXs down and a... There's the Wonder Tag for the Mallow. Wonder Tag for the Mallow. Mallow, of course, a great supporter card. Being able to search your deck for any two cards you would like and then put them to the side, shuffle your deck, and then put those two cards back on top of your deck in any order you choose. So when you're on your turn, you have a Zorak GX and use your trade ability and you draw those two cards. Pretty nice to know what those cards are. Folks, that's called a combo. <laughs> <laughs> And he does have a lot of options. Remember, this deck, since it plays that Mallow, you get to play like a few one of items. You get to play the Puzzle of Times as well. Just being able to, like, well, all right, I'll get two Puzzle of Times and I'll just get two of anything right now. And one of the nice things with Zorak GX decks, even if you play additional one of items that are situational, 
having that tradeability doesn't make those cards that are unuseful. You can still discard them with the tradeability, drawing into two brand new cards, which give you lots of options. All right, and there is the second trade. Double colorless choice ban got off the mallow. Ooh. Uses this free retreat with the uh, float stone from the Mew. And here we the Coco. Yeah, the popular strategy we saw from Tord employ round one. Tapu Coco flying flip has been coming in handy, especially against these 190 HP GX Pokemon. Yes, with all these hit, all the hit points on these strong Pokemon, being able to flying flip and bring down that total hit points is a definite advantage for Pokemon that do massive amounts of damage, but not quite one shots. Nothing in ultra. Uh, in what we're looking at with the Duskmane Necrozma. All right, and here, unfortunately, since the Mew was retreated, that Tapu Koko's in the active. It's a one prize Pokemon, and you don't really want to be discarding three energy to take a prize on a one prize Pokemon. No, like you had mentioned before, the whole point of this deck is you want to attack three times and win. And right now, uh, if he attacked, he would have to attack four times at least to win. Well, it might be four with the the Solgaleo <laughs> Prism, but that's true. <laughs> All that's, right, so. it's nitpicking. Puts down the float stone on the uh, Dusk Main Necrozma, bring up that Mew from Fates Collide. So here, one thing I actually really like is one way to get around that drawback of a Prism Star Pokemon being knocked out and sent to the Lost Zone is Mew copying the attack and just using it by itself, like. All right, it's fine. Like, I don't even need to bring this guy up into danger. That's right. Mew, with its Memories of Dawn ability, being able to copy the abilities of any of your basic Pokemon in play, uh, Prism Stars, as we had mentioned during the intro, uh, are always basic Pokemon if they are, if they are Pokemon. So uh, Mew definitely works great with those Pokemon. And with that Sycamore, he did discard two energy. I think I see another Ultra Ball. He could discard a third. And remember, there's six Pokemon on Diego's side of the field. So... If he has six energy in his discard, he can attach him anywhere he likes. He could power up all those Pokemon. Uh, and with that Mew, he could also later on, the bench Mew, copy the other Duskmane Necrozma GX's attacks as well. It's looking like he is deciding what to Ultra Ball away. Looks like he decided on a Metal Energy and a Field Blower. And again, you don't really need Pokemon. It's really just to get that Metal Energy into this card because these attachments are going to be so important going forward, especially since this Tapu Koko is kind of softening everyone up. That's right. Tapu Koko with that Flying Flip spreading out that damage on the field. Uh, Steven trying to get powered up because he knows he needs to start taking these knockouts sooner than later before Koko spreads too much damage. Gets that Tapu Lele for later and... There we go. How many energy does he have? One, two, three. Yeah, so th three. It's a good number. That's a, that's a solid number. It kind of means you're an energy attachment away from taking a knockout. And, and there we do see it. And remember, also the GX attack, since you have to play it when you're down, if Diego kind of goes half hazardly and takes a knockout on someone, like, okay, well, now I don't need to discard energy, then it makes my position even a little bit more better. That's right. And Mew, only having 50 hit points, uh, has a very powerful ability, of course, uh, no retreat cost, which is great. However, it is very easy to be knocked out. And as you had mentioned before, that could set up for a nice counterattack with the GX attack. Action back on Diego. He does draw that double colorless for the turn. He does have options here, it looks I like. I think that's the third field blower that he's traded away. That is the away third this field game. blower he's traded away. Must not be afraid to use those this game. And then there's that Ace of Roller card. Usually such a great card, especially just because your GX Pokemon have so much HP. But not really against this Duskmane. <laughs> Duskmane and Crozman will be able to probably do enough damage to one-shot most of the Pokemon. Uh, being able to knock it out in one hit makes it kind of uh, irrelevant to uh, pick up a Pokemon if there's damage on it when you don't have any damage on your board. So Diego has a ton of options in his hand right now. I think I do see a double puzzle. Yeah, when you have... Uh, multiple Zorark GXs out. You're able to use trade multiple times, drawing into multiple cards, and every turn you're netting in a positive uh, 
two cards at least, uh, in addition to playing your supporters. Quickly, your hand can get large, which gives you lots of opportunities for options, but does make your turns take a little longer as you have to think, which cards do I need to play this turn? Which ones do I need to hold on to? Yeah, and Diego opts just to flying flip oh. again. That, of course, puts lots of damage on the field. There are four damage on five of those Pokemon, one of which being that 50 hit point Mew in the active position. And here we go. Steven really does need to find a Guzma to try to take a knockout on these Zorarks. Attaches another metal energy to the other Duskmane Necrozma. Both of them sitting, uh, one sitting at three energy, the other one has four. So he is able to attack, but doesn't really want to take the knockout on that Tapu Koko. Yeah, and he chooses just to play the end. His hand was full of Pokemon he couldn't play. And that's the thing, when you play a deck with this many energies and uh, doesn't play a whole lot of Pokemon, but when you have that many energies, you're going to have more situations where there's lots of cards uh, and not as many trainers as what you're trying to find to give you that options, like you had mentioned, needing that Guzma. Yeah, and looking at his deck, it's a very straightforward deck. I actually like it a lot. Uh, it's just consistent, does what it does, and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, sometimes consistency is more important than anything else because it might be fun to put in a uh, tech or two uh, for certain specific situations, but uh, consistency guarantees you or increases your odds of guaranteeing uh, a more stable game. And yeah, again, he doesn't really want to take this prize just because <laughs> he wants to use his GX attack. And oh, he does have an Ultra Ball. Could get some more metal energy in the discard. Maybe we'll see another Radiant. But looking at his Pokemon on the field, uh, Ultra, both of his Dusk Main Necrozmas look like they're pretty well set up. Uh, if he were to do it, he'd probably want to put it on the other side of the field, power up that uh, Mew. Oh, he, he actually chooses to go and counter Mew's actual attack. <laughs> uh, one colorless <laughs> energy, search your deck for a Pokemon. Kind of just setting up for next turn. It's like, okay, well, he's probably just going to Flying Flip again, knock out my Mew. But then I can use my GX attack. I can Tapu Lele, search for Guzma, and then I can start getting the ball rolling. And Diego's going to have to try to stop that right now. And with 40 on each of those Dusk mains, he has the possibility to do it. Yeah, Diego, obviously a very experienced player, won the World Championships last year. So uh, definitely can... I, he used Encounter on Mew. He's sitting there, he's like, okay, he wants me to knock him out so he can use that GX attack. So probably looking for a way himself to find a way around the situation that he is presented with. Yeah, again, I think both of these players are just like, I hope I draw <laughs> Guzma. Doesn't look like either one has one either. Uh, Diego has a, a massive hand there, but not a single Guzma. Yeah, and there we see the flying... F oh, no, he no, just he passes. Passed. <laughs> All right, yeah. I actually like this, just because it's really like, once the first prize card's taken, then that gets the ball rolling, and I think the game will end in three turns. Both players uh, have lots of Pokemon set up. Uh, Diego still hasn't evolved that Riolu. He's waiting for that turn to evolve into Lucario GX to take advantage of the effect of the attack, but uh, both players just waiting to see who's going to attack first and try to draw into that Guzma before the other player does. Here we might see uh, Energy Drive from Mew copying, copying Tapu Lele. <laughs> these players, I think for once, these players don't want to take a prize. Like, <laughs> right. They're, Normally they're when you win to... Pokemon, you win by drawing all your prize cards. But uh, in this situation, they're holding back on drawing, so that way they can be set up for future prize card draws. Uh, using Memories of Dawn to copy that uh, Tapu Lele, definitely doing 80 damage onto that Tapu Coco. Uh, putting Diego in a situation here where he needs to decide what he's going to do next. All right, trade again. Does he draw a Guzma? It does not look like it. Does have access to one more trade if he likes. And with that many cards in your hand, you do have options there. Does use another trade. No. Still no Guzma. I think there's three or four puzzle of time in <laughs> Diego's hand right now. Once he plays one, he's double check his discard. I don't have one in there, do I? No. So, uh, Diego is looking at all the options in his hands. Uh, he sees what Steven was starting to do, and he's like, well, if he's going to attack me with Mew, I might as well do something here. 
So he's taking a look at all his options, see what's going to do. Yeah, and you see both players with that Tapu Lele GX in hand, which could go get the Guzma they need, but both of their benches are full. And uh, there we see the flying flip from Diego. He will take the first knockout on the active Mew. And I think that's really just a concession of, well, you're going to take a knockout on my Tapu Coco next turn. I might as well do this. Right. So he does draw a prize guard, does not draw one of those Riolus, so he's still with just the one. But again, all these flying flip damage, 60 damage on both of his attackers that are charged up. Uh, it's just a simple ride of speeding with a toy span away from being knocked out. Steven looking at his options on his remote, still doesn't have the Guzma, but now he has a bench spot, which is very vital when having that Lele in hand. And there the Tapu Lele comes down, one or tag. I think we're going to see a Guzma here. Yeah, I think there's going to be some Guzma here. It's your boy coming out for the first time this game. <laughs> He's going to play this Guzma here. He's going to switch one of his bench. What do you think? He goes for the Zorak GX. Yeah, but see, Diego with this massive hand size, Steven's not able to end him. Uh, that's one thing that is the kind of drawback of Guzma, where a lot of times you're like, okay, I need a Guzma, but I also need to end you. Right. And I can't do both. That's why, like, in Expanded, we see, like, red card and stuff like that pop up. But here we go. GX attack. The Sun's Eclipse GX. 250 damage Ooh. taking the knockout on Zorark GX. It is now four to five in prizes, but this is kind of what Diego wants. That's right. He now has another bench spot, uh, and he can turn around and counter... Uh, that Duskmane Necrozma already has 60 damage on it, so it's definitely softer than it once was. Yeah, and with that strong energy on the real Lu, a simple Lucario GX of evolution this turn will take the knockout. And Diego is deciding if he's ready for it, and he is ready for it. I think I think you have to be here. You have all these cards, and this is the turn you've been waiting. It's like, okay. I'm, I'm staring down two fully powered Dusk mains. If I knock those out, you're going to have a really hard time winning. Right. And, but I think he does realize he only has one shot for it. He has to take that prize card and draw into one of those Realus so he can come back later. Though he does put the double colors on the Zorark GX, uh, giving it the ability to attack as well. I think it's kind of funny. I think Diego got the Guzma from the prizes <laughs> off the flying flip. And he is retreating, Mew EX having a float stone on it, and brings up that Lucario GX with the strong energy. And again, his hand is just insane at this moment. He has everything he could ever want now. And takes the knockout onto the Dusk Main Necrozma, uh, drawing it. He did get the real loop. He did get yeah. his real loop back, so now he has options later in the game. And Steven promoting that Mew with the 50 hit points and free retreat. And I believe Lucario's attack is Aura Sphere. Uh, when you evolve it, you deal 120 damage instead of the 30. And then the strong energy allows it for 140, which does take the knockout. And here we see from Steven, we see Palpad. Again, a card that hasn't really been played that much. Uh, we are kind of spoiled when we had versus Seeker. Right. Uh, versus Seeker obviously lets it go straight to your hand. Palpad puts it back in the deck, but you do have the option of getting more than one supporter. So it gives you options later in the game. Do I need multiple Guzmas? Do I need to refresh my hand recovery? Uh, lots of different options here. So uh, I saw one Guzma. I did not see the second card. And again, this Lucario will get knocked out if Steven chooses so. But then again, he's going to need to charge up another Duskmane. Yeah, with Lucario GX knocking out that Duskmane Necrozma. Only has one powered up on the bench. Has 60 damage on it. And so... So I actually like this play a lot. Playing the third Tapu Lele, getting a Guzma, and he'll be able to knock out the Zorak on the bench. Because remember, Lucario does more damage if it evolved that turn. So he'll take out the Zorak, which does 120 base damage right now leaving the Lucario that only does 50. And its GX attack only does damage. It has more damage counters on it. So right now, that Duskman's looking pretty safe. Yes, in order to use the attack, he does have... If he uses that Meteor Tempest attack, he will have to discard multiple of those energies attached to the Duskman Necrozma GX. Uh, we'll put him in an opportunity where he'll have to repower up 
Uh, still has that Soul Galeo Prism Star on the bench, so he can still use that or the Mew, but um, and he does go for the knockout onto that Zoroark GX. And again, like I was saying before, using the Guzma this turn means he didn't end Diego. So <laughs> Diego's hand of triple puzzle of time and double colorless's galore, choice bands. I think I think we're gonna see another Zorak GX at the board. Yes, Diego definitely doesn't need to use the trade right now, but I'm sure he would obviously love the opportunity to get even more cards in his hand. Uh, but uh, playing an Ultra Ball. We even see the Professor Kukui in his hand. Uh, being able to boost up right is beating to deal 140 to take the knockout if he chooses to. So it looks like we see another Zorak GX coming out. Uh, the full art one this time. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think this is spelling disaster for Steven right now because you take the knockout here. You didn't get an attach of energy to a Dustman on the bench last turn. Uh, what do you, like, you're going to have to hope for a bunch of max elixirs and do all that stuff. Because if you try to set up again with the Mew or the Sogalio G G uh, Prism, then it just gets knocked out and Diego wins. Remember, he knocked out that Mew with Flying Flip earlier. That's right. Well, we do see an N on Diego's oh. side of the field. Uh, looks like that hurts so much for Steven right now. Steven going down to two cards. Uh, this is uh, N being great as an early card to draw into cards for your hand to increase the size, but also great as a counter card to bring down your opponent to, in this instance, only two cards for Steven. <laughs> Diego draws into a double puzzle of time off that <laughs> N as well. And with that choice band, he will be able to take the knockout here. And of course, Zoark, even though Diego went down to three cards, he can still use trade to draw into more cards in his hand to try to come back. All right. And our current world champion is down to one prize card in game one of round two. And there it goes. Steven scoops up his cards. He's like, yeah, that N and all this damage on the board. You can just flying flip to take the knockout next turn. Let, let's try it again, game two. Yeah, Steven, I think, yeah, like you mentioned, realized he wasn't in the best situation. Uh, wanted to save a little bit more time rather than go through his turn, give his opponent everything he needs to attack him as well. Decides to just, let's move on to the next game, give us more time because I need to win two more games now. Yeah, time management is one of the things that is so important when playing competitive Pokemon. And we saw it round one with Torg just playing super blazing fast. <laughs> And I, I didn't actually catch the timer on the screen when we panned out, but I would think there would be about, like, what, 30 minutes left, 25 minutes left. The first game definitely did take a while. They did spend a lot of time just kind of staring at each other. <laughs> like, the one turn literally just yeah. pass. So, um, like, are, are you sure? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pass. That being said, both decks do seem to have some pretty strong attackers that can get powered up pretty quickly. So if they need to play at turbo speed, um, one of the nice things about uh, the metal deck here with Dustmane to Krozma is it is a pretty straightforward and, and uh, to the point deck. So a lot of four ofs and 16 ofs. And <laughs> yeah, so when he draws his cards, he doesn't have to spend a whole lot of time to decide what he's going to do. Uh, fewer options makes for a quicker setup, so hopefully he can play his next two games very quickly and see if he can pull off the win. Yeah, essentially, both of these decks just have a critical mass, uh, especially with Diego with his flying flips, just kind of softening everyone up for knockouts later on in the game. So once we hit that point like we did with flying flip knocking out the Mew, I think the game's going to be over super quick. Right. Uh, but we will see what happens here. The players are both drawing into the next <laughs> hand. Uh, we see uh, four energy, double max <laughs> elixir. It would be great if there was also a Pokemon there, but you probably... Uh, I, I think he's probably glad that probably he had a Pokemon. Didn't that have hand. a supporter there either, did no. he? No. No. All right, but we're looking oh. at Diego's side. He's got, got that, that Bridget got turn that one. Bridget. And a Zorak in hand as well. That's a pretty solid start if I ever saw one right there. It doesn't look like he has another supporter, but thankfully Zorak might be able to help him set up a little bit. Uh, going first is also huge against Zorak decks, just because since all your cards are stage ones, uh, it takes at least a turn to get him out, so it might give Steven the edge he needs. And we see another mulligan here. Uh, and he's losing the edge every extra card Diego's drawing. Most of his, all of his Pokemon in his deck are basic Pokemon, so uh, the odds of, uh, I mean, there's 11 basics there. 
statistically you're going to hit one sooner than later, but uh, we did see a couple mulligans there. But it looks like we see a basic. Oh, we see a couple basics, so uh, some options there for... This, this hand's actually looking pretty sweet. Having that Registeel to start in the active, uh, kind of reminiscent of the Volcano one we saw round one, but instead of getting two energy, it just gets that one, but it does 30 damage. All right, so we're looking at the prizes there. Nothing too worrisome. Uh, Diego. Oh, two Guzma. He only two. plays the three. So. Only plays three Guzma. Two of them are prized. Uh, the two cards he got off the mulligans were Zorark GX. <laughs> he has three in hand, starts the Zoro as well. Wow. We <laughs> we could see turn two of Diego just going Zorark, 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 trade, 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 trade. <laughs> That being said, I think Steven has an N in his hand. Uh, if he, he does, he's going to need to play he it. He will need to play it. Whenever your opponent takes multiple mulligans, that's generally the time when you go first that you're like, I'm going to try everything I can to play an N this <laughs> Yeah. Just to take away those extra cards. And he actually does get that Ultra Ball discarding two metal as well. And with that Solgaleo Prism, you, that's where you want the energy. And with the Regi Registeel as well. That's right. Uh, we have energies in the discard pile. Uh, we end to take away Diego's massive hand of everything amazing. Bridget, triple Zorark. <laughs> Things you generally would like to have if you're playing at an international championships. <laughs> <laughs> so both players will be drawing six cards off of the end. We're still early in the game, just starting. Uh, we're on the first turn, so of course that card drawing one card for every prize card remaining. Registeel with that Turbo Artok will be able to do 30 damage it next turn, but not this turn, because when you go first in the Pokemon training card game, you are unable to attack. Yeah, it's kind of shifted, because the formats used to be like, all right, I got these set-up Pokemon, like the old Dunsparce, which is getting printed, actually. I like it. I don't know. But like try to set up, and now it's just shifted to where we use our supporters to set up and just hope that's for the best, but sometimes you don't draw it. Yeah, starter Pokemon used to be a thing back in the day. Uh, I'd be interested to see what impact Dunsparce has when it comes back, but as of right now, uh, looks Ooh, like... Getting the Tapu Koko off the top nice. and a Riolu. I think he has a Cynthia as well. He so does. the hand's not as good as his opening one, but it, it's still a pretty nice hand. Being able to put that uh, Riolu on the bench, get that strong energy into play right away, uh, sets up a turn to Lucario GX. Yeah, and with the strong energy, it actually takes the knockout on Registeel if he wants to. Oh, this is interesting. So I think he was kind of debating a little bit because his hand was Zorark Evo Soda. And he could say pass and then evolve both and then play the Cynthia. At the same time, that would play some good mind games because Steven would think, oh, I just end him into not having a supporter. Uh, he's probably in a bad board position. But Diego instead opting for the safe play, uh, playing the Cynthia to get himself a new hand of six cards. So let's see if that pays out for him. In the, in the end, drawing cards is always better. Uh, that's my philosophy. Right. Even after everything, you're not sure where you're going to get off the trade with the Zoroark. So, and right. looking at this hand, it's actually pretty nicely set up for next turn. He does have that Tapu Lele and Evo Soda as well, and a double colorless. He was able to bench another Zuru as well. So we could Who needs Bridget? <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Bridget? All right. So on Steven's side, we see looks like he played that Cynthia. Yeah, Floatstone coming down, Cynthia. And again, he really just needs to find Max Luxor. That's the whole point of his deck. That's how he gets going at the same speed as Zorg, I, I think. So with those six new cards, uh, he does play the max amounts of Max Elixirs. So we might see some of that. We see, obviously, every time we've he's drawn cards, he's drawn energy cards. Uh, when you play uh, 16 of those, that's a pretty pretty high odds that that's going to happen. And he actually has the Mew. And it looks like, yeah, so there's two in there. So why do 30 and get one when you can just get two? That's right. So uh, using the Solgaleo Prism Star to attack, copied from Mew. Uh, looks like he gets that Duskmane Necrozma powered up. And hey, again, turn two, three energy on Duskmane. Looking pretty sweet. There now it's all on Diego. Like, all right, you, you see what's coming. <laughs> you you, you got to try to beat this. All right, Diego playing the Evo Soda. 
allowing him to search his deck for any of his evolution cards in his deck and playing it onto that Pokemon. So this is the interesting thing. Like, so with that double colors in his hand, this Evo Soda, he can get Zorark, take the knockout on the Mew. But then again, he takes the knockout, starts the Sun's Eclipse GX. Then he'll have to get some more Pokemon in play, and he'll be playing kind of behind, even though he's the one to take the first knockout. Right, and it's not like last game where he had Tapu Koko in the active position. He was able to flying flip multiple times to put the, so, to soften up that Duskmane Necrozma. Not this time. It looks like he's still at his full hit points. Uh, Diego will have to uh, think very carefully about what he's going to be doing with this turn. Does get that full art Zorark this time. <laughs> All right, does opt to evolve into the Zorark GX. Uh, Probably we'll be looking to see a trade here sooner than later. His hand is a little awkward in the sense that it doesn't have an actual draw supporter, but he does have that Tapu Lele. It's just sometimes bench space might become a little... Like we saw earlier last game, is his bench space t was just full and he couldn't play the Tapu Lele. So we see Diego with hand movements, doing some math, uh, extra counting, just to make sure he, he's doing the math correctly. Uh, does use trade and discards the Mew EX. Does get a puzzle time off that, but right now that's not what he's looking for. All right, so he does play the Lele. Is going to use that Wonder Tag ability to search his deck for any supporter card he would like. Um, also looks like he's checking to see how many Ultra Balls he had, but found, found that Guzma. Yeah, so remember, this is the one Guzma in his deck right now. And... I'm not sure what... Oh, he's going to go for Flying Flying Flip. Yeah, flip. absolutely. Uh, so far, we've been two rounds deep into this tournament, and Tapu Koko has been the MVP. Tapu Koko only printed as a promo card. Uh, you had to get it from one of those box sets. Very good card. Oh, uh, no! Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Tapu Lele coming out. Energy Drive dealing 100 damage to this Duskmane, ignoring the resistance. He's like, all right, let's stop playing with these kitty games. <laughs> Let's get some damage on this guy. One of the things about Duskmane Necrozma, it does need lots of energies in order to use its attack, uh, which gives Tapu Lele an opportunity to use that energy drive attack to do more damage with only a double colorless, uh, simply because of the massive amounts of energy is required. All right. Uh, one important card that Steven did have was the Field Blower for the Parallel City, meaning he's able to bench another Duskmane and start charging it up because... This one in the act is most likely going to go down next turn. That's right. Uh, they are currently tied on prizes, so won't be able to use the GX attack. Uh, but hey, it's a Max Elixir. What do you think the odds are he's going to it's going to work? <laughs> <laughs> and it does. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. At least in that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's deciding where he's going to attach it. Looks like it's going to be going onto the Dusk Main Necrozma. And again, taking the knockout, and then next turn he could take a turn off, charge up those dust mains again. And right now, like knocking out the Tapu Lele is good. You'd rather knock out that Zorark, but kind of take what you have to get. Yeah, you, you attack the threat that has the energies on it. It's right in front of you, and. Yeah, it takes the knockout using that Meteor Tempest attack. 220 damage, knocking out the Tapu Lele, and action now back on Diego. Double puzzle in hand. Oh. Evo Soda Double Colorless seems like a pretty good combination. You know, when you have two Pokemon out on the bench uh, that need to evolve, um, having the Double Colorless to be able to use the attacks of either the Zoroark GX or the Tapu Koko, Definitely looking in a good position here. So he does opt to evolve into the Zorak GX. Wonder Tag, Tapu Lele. He's eyeing down that Lucario also. I think that would probably be the Pokemon of choice to try to take the knockout. You don't really want to put up those Zoraks just because trade is so important. Yeah, being able to have the trade later uh, for when your opponent plays N on you after you've taken a knockout is very handy. Uh, he does attach to the Tapu Koko. It looks like he's there. Will we see some flying flipping attacking uh, going from this Tapu Koko? Yeah, so ending Steven down to four. 
A little disruption there. Like, all right, let's hope you don't draw a float stone, and I'll just flying flip until I win the game. <laughs> that being said, I think it's a good odd that Steven will see some basic energies off of this. Um, but with that heavy retreat cost of the Duskman Necrozma, uh, you're going to need a couple turns to power it up if you try to attack or retreat. All right, here's the six cards. Lucario would be the card of choice. I do see an Evo Soda in his hand. All right, uses trade, gets rid of uh, Bridget. Late game, not quite as good. Second trade. So now it'll be interesting if he actually chooses to Flying Flip or if he goes, oh, okay. I think he's going Flying Flip now. That choice ban makes this a two-hit knockout for Tapu Koko. Meanwhile, just softening up that Dustman on the bench so Lucario can clean it up later. That's right. Also puts damage on that 50 hit point Mew. Uh, gives some opportunities for easier knockouts down the road. Uh, Diego needing to draw six prize cards, obviously, to win the game still. But he's actually looking like he's in pretty good board position. Uh, Steven did draw the Max Elixir, and of course it worked again. Seeing another en basic energy attached to that Duskman Necrozma on the bench. Yeah, and again, one thing we haven't, we, we touched on a little bit after game one, but if you look at the timer, it's less than 10 minutes. And uh, if Steven's going to want to try to pull this game out, he's going to need to play another game. That's right. In the Pokemon trading card game at official events during Swiss rounds, if both players win one game each uh, and the mat game three does not resolve before time plus three expires, it does result in a tie which only gives the players one match point instead of the golden three match points, which they're both going for. It helps having a judge in the booth, guys. <laughs> so there's that pal pad shuffling in to Professor Sycamore and then having another Professor Sycamore in hand. Three energy on that Dustman on the bench already. Does he get a float stone? No. no. Man, this Tapu Koko is going to put in work. Yeah, it is. All right, so, and looking at his board position, he just passes onto Diego. I'm sure Diego, big sigh of relief with that. And there is another Evo Soto getting the third Zorark out. Uh, Diego is firing on all cylinders right now, and I don't think there's no stopping the flying flip train. <laughs> Having three Zorg GX, he set himself up to be protected uh, when he starts taking prize cards. If Steven tries to go for a defensive end, it will not matter because he could just trade three times, draw up to six new cards, and be just fine. Uh, does look like he plays his own end after attaching a double color synergy to the Zorark GX. I, I, I'm so impressed with Tapu Koko. Uh, just, I think it's because the drawback of Zorark in standard is its inability to actually take one-hit knockouts. And with just a simple one of, which is mostly used for free retreat, honestly. Mm. Just like, all right, I got a free retreat, or I can Guzma and then retreat to the guy. <laughs> but Flying Flip just showing how powerful it is to soften up everyone. And so it's like, all right, Zork, you're pretty good. Get in there, right? It's beating knockout everyone. That's right. So after drawing the cards, does use his trade ability. He's looking to make sure he has everything he needs in his hand to finish up here. But these players do need to uh, pick up their pace of play if they're worried about that clock at all. Well, if I'm in Diego seat, it doesn't really matter. I won the first game. I'm in a very like advantageous spot in this game. And this flying flip will just dominate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Knocking out that active Dusk main. 20 more on the Muse, so where it's knocked out next turn with another flying flip. The Dustman on the bench is now being threatened just by a choice band on any of Diego's Pokemon. Whew. Diego definitely looking like a solid board position right now. But let's see if Steven can find some way to work his way back into the game here. He is, they are tied on prizes right now. The game is not over. Wow, he actually almost missed that Max Elixir. I was, <laughs> was kind of worried for him a little bit. Ended up on the fifth card. Still works, though. Puts that fourth energy onto the Duskman Necrozma, giving him the ability to use his large attack, Meteor Tempest. And Ultra Ball discarding two Floatstone. 
And there we see the one tag for the Guzma. Be interested to see what he goes for here. Um, there are three Zorak GXs on the bench. Um, will be able to knock out any of those. Or does he go for the Riolu, which has the strong energy attached? I, I think it would have to be just for Zorak with the double colorless. Try to get rid of Diego's resources as much as you can. It's kind of hard to do when your opponent's trading three times a turn. And that is exactly what he does. Brings up the Zorak GX, uses Meteor Tempest to do a massive amount of damage to knock out the Zorark GX. There we go. So Steven does only need two prizes, all right? And he's going to have to set up with that Sogalio Prism. But the only question is if he actually has time. That's right. Uh, Diego uh, is has lots of Pokemon, lots of options out there still. Um, Steven only has two energies on the board. Uh, Mew obviously would be able to copy the attack of the Solgaleo Prism Star, but if we see another flying flip here, uh, then he would need to find another energy to put onto that Solgaleo Prism Star to try to reattach energies to his Pokemon. There's the Rescue Stretcher coming down. Kind of like catch all, like, okay, I can get another Zorark. Three's, three's been good. <laughs> so he does put the Lele back into his deck as well as a Zerua and a Zorark. Uh, looks like wanting to put some cards back into his deck, but also give himself some opportunities later in the game. You know what? I, I think people have realized that Tapu Koko has, is so good. I think that's why it's on the pin for this Internationals. That could be a thing. Maybe. Or, you know, just it's on every pin. But yeah. Still a really cool Pokemon. <laughs> uh, and the flying flip ability. I mean, when I saw that card came out, I was very excited. I uh, recommended to my local game shops to order many of those promo boxes because they would fly off the shelves. They would flying flip themselves into the cash box. Oh, no. Nah. All right. And it begins. <laughs> <laughs> Ultra Ball getting that Zorua. But again, Diego, he just has to finish the game two turns. I, I, I would think. Or, or at least just stop him from retreating. Remember, Steven did discard two Floatstone last turn. So Dustbane to Krozma with that three retreat cost will be in. Oh. Yeah, so he actually retreated, just took the knockout with Riotus beating. He's like, all right, well, I could just take this knockout, try to take another knockout on a GX, and then just win the game. Right. Uh, probably was not aware of the Dustmane Necrozma in Steven's hand. Uh, he immediately benched it after the knockout. Um, Mew is in the active spot with one energy. Diego only needs two prize cards to win as well as Steven. Uh, but we will see how we're looking. Well, so this is the rough part because this gives Steven the opportunity to actually get energy onto that Dustmane on the bench. And then Diego will be forced to attack with that Tapu Koko. Kind of like, hope he doesn't draw a Guzma type thing. Exactly. And that, there we do see the Cynthia from Steven with a little under three minutes remaining to go. Three minutes should be enough time to finish this game. However, if it does go to game three, I do not foresee that game finishing at all. All right, Max, Max Elixir. Elixir. No! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is possible to miss a Max Elixir when you play 16 basic energies in your deck. Uh, as unlikely as it is, it did occur. All right, but with five Pokemon in play, that means five Metal Energy coming down on Steven's side of the board. <laughs> oh, wait, six. Three... Four, five. There should only be the there five. There should only be the five. Uh, hopefully, that will be noticed sooner than later. All right, action back on Diego. Again, so he needs to take a knockout here. We could see a big Lucario coming down, taking a knockout on Tapu Lele, possibly. There's the Professor Kukui. 
Professor Kukui. That doesn't, that doesn't really help right now, though. Not right now. Uh, the Mew. Uh, I know, I'm, I'm just always points. excited when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with only 10 hit points remaining, Mew definitely does not need uh, to be knocked out with the assistance of Kukui and any of his po attacking Pokemon. Uh, Riolu could even handle it himself with a simple little punch. Oh, I think what we s there's a Zorg off the screen. Okay. Yeah. Because he just traded three times. So. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to the left of the Riolu, you can't see it right now, but there is another Zorark GX right there, so he does, in fact, have six Pokemon out. Uh, okay, well, this is his one out, so Guzma of that Registeel has that big three retreat cost, but as we see in Steven's hand, he has that Guzma, and that will be the game. And with 30 seconds left going into game three, th this is going to end in a tie. All right, draw, Guzma, and there's the game. There's the game. All right, so the players, uh, they're going to start to pick up their game and shuffle and set up for the next game. Uh, this does go into game number three uh, as time gets ready to expire. Yeah, uh, I know it's not the same thing as the time rules in Top Cut, where if time gets called, you play sudden death, one prize. This is a full game, and essentially you, what, have three turns? That's correct. Uh, they would need to set up their game. Uh, first person draw a card to start their turn would start turn one. So they had one turn, two turns, three turns, uh, and they would more than likely result in the tie. Both players seem to acknowledge that already, and they have filled out their match slip for the tie. So there we have it. Diego and Steven end up with the tie round two. Two very strong decks, uh, both very good players. Uh, this Duskman deck was interesting. I. Had I, I like it when you do the most minimal amount possible, and when you really only have to attack like four times in a game, that's my kind of deck. <laughs> Definitely with that Necroz uh, Dustmane Necrozma, being able to do that Meteor Tempest, knocking out most of the Pokemon in the format. I mean, if you look at uh, Zorark GX, uh, you look at Buzzwall GX, you look at all these Pokemon, uh, that should be able to take out most Pokemon in the format, uh, but then having the Mew, to copy the Prism Star attack. Uh, that to get that, the that, back that out. was great. Definitely. Uh, kind of just counteracting the drawback of those Prism Star cards and Mew putting in a lot of work just recharging those Dust Mains. That's right. Um, Mew, 50 hit points only, so that's the drawback. But when you have a free retreat cost, putting that one energy on there instead of having to use three to retreat saves your float stones for your other heavy Pokemon. Yeah, and unfortunately, with no winner, that means no winner interview. And I do like to mention that we will be on break for round three.